One of the main purposes of this expanded session is to give you a taster, to give you a preview. It's the trailer for next year. And we are building next year's theme, called for more, mobilizing God's people, God's way, on the biblical foundation of the book of Ephesians. And there's two reasons we're doing that. The first reason is this, that the book of Ephesians, it's constitutional. In fact, the theologian Marcus Barth says that Ephesians is the constitution of the church. If you were to ask Paul, what was Jesus thinking when he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will prevail against it? The book of Ephesians is actually Paul's best answer. More than any other of his epistles, he's dealing with the, the nature of the church and it's transcending local concerns. He wants us to see in essence, what our early founding fathers saw about America. What is our constitution? It's the ideas and the ideology that holds this diverse group of people into a, a nation. And that's what we see in the book of Ephesians. It's Paul's constitutional thinking that will hold together this global, diverse Jesus movement. And it applies equally to the very organized mega church on Mango Road, in Indiana, as it does to a highly organic microchurch under a mango tree in India. So we're using the book of Ephesians because it's constitutional, and secondly, because it's universal. Usually when Paul's writing a letter, it's very contextual. He's usually writing a specific leader or a specific group of people about a specific set of problems. You know, most of the epistles, he's writing about some really specifically jacked up stuff, right? Anybody in a church with a lot of specifically jacked up stuff? If your hand's not up, you're not looking close enough, right? But this, this letter's different. It's meant to be circulated. It's not written to the professionals, as we tend to think of clergy. It's written to the ordinary folks that are leading the house churches in Ephesus, to butchers and bakers and candlestick makers. And the theme for next year is called for more. And what Paul is saying is the church is called for more, and that is for everyone, for all the people of God. So what we're going to do in each one of these expanded sessions is we'll exegete just one big idea from each one of the chapters And then with that, there will be a correlating move that we need to make in in order to create this culture for more in our church. So let's look at Ephesians 1 first. And just a quick summary of that whole chapter. Ephesians 1, it begins in the first half with this symphony of praise for the Christ. And then the second half of that chapter is a strategic prayer for the church. Ephesians 1 through 14 in chapter 1 is this symphony of praise. It has one theme moving through it, and it is this theme. Jesus is more. Can I get an amen? And the second half of the chapter, verses 15 through 22, is a strategic prayer. And the one theme moving through that is this. The church is called for more. And that is the theme of this first session, called for more. So let's look at a bit of Paul's big prayer. And if you have a Bible with you, you can turn to Ephesians chapter 1, verses 22 and 23. And these two verses really do summarize both the the symphony of praise for Christ and the strategic prayer for the church. Verse 22 is this symphony of praise. It says, God placed all things under Jesus' feet. Now underline that in your Bible. How big are you when God has placed everything under your feet. Can we agree? You are so big. You know, when kids are little, parents like to ask them this question. And grandparents are into it too. And you've probably done this. Have you looked at your little people and you ask them, how big are you? Have you done that? And how do they answer? It's kind of that sing-songy, throw their arms open. What do they say? Say it with me. So big. And that's what Paul is asking us to ask here. Now, there's some occasions where you don't ask that question. Like if your spouse asks you, how do I look in this new outfit? Don't say, so big, that won't work. It's not a good idea. But Paul is saying on every occasion, we should ask of Jesus, how big are you? And the answer is always, so big. 
See, Jesus is always more. That's how big he is. No matter how much you know of love, Jesus is always more. No matter how much you've seen of goodness, Jesus is always more. No matter how much you've seen of his power and his sovereignty, Jesus is always more. No matter what you have seen of his wisdom, Jesus is always more. Multiplied to the infinite power. And Paul's first concern, and as church leaders, our first concern should be this, that we would be obsessed with Jesus ever growing larger in our minds and in our hearts. The way Michael Frost and Alan Hirsch talk about it is that we need to constantly read Jesus, our churches. Because it is very common for us to be able to get what you could call a little Jesus syndrome. I had a friend not too long ago who bought me this little Jesus action figure. Have you ever seen it? It's about five inches tall. He has a button on the back, and when you press it, his arms go up like this. He actually comes with like fish and loaves. And this little Jesus, you can just stick him in your pocket and take him wherever you want him and then I guess pull him out when you need him. And and the entropy of our life is that we will succumb to a little Jesus syndrome. And when churches begin to have a little Jesus syndrome, we offer worship without awe, we offer our prayers without faith, We, we offer service without joy, We offer suffering without perseverance. And Paul's first concern is that we need to be obsessed with the mystery of more that is Jesus. And that is actually the first move we need to make. We need to illuminate the mystery of more. And here's the big idea. The church is called for more, and that begins by illuminating this mystery and this wonder, that Jesus is more. Only Jesus can fill everything in every way. And that's what Paul begins to speak of next in verse 23. He says, And God placed all things under his feet, and then he appointed Jesus to be head over everything for the church, which is the body. And get this. The church is the body, and what does it say next? The fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Now get this. Paul here now is talking about what is church? Church. And he says, the church is a body, and what does that body do? It is the fullness of Jesus. Now remember, how big is Jesus? So big, he's always more, and then guess who the church is? We are the body. How big is that? So if Jesus is more, then we are called to more. In fact, his vision is so expansive, he says that we will fill everything in every way. So the church, we know this, the church isn't a building, it's a body. The church isn't an activity, it's an identity. The church is not a program, it's the people of God, saved by the power of God, for the purposes of God. The church is all the people of God on an everyday mission to fill everything, everywhere with the fullness of Jesus. How big is that vision? That's the more that we're called to. And yet, most of us as church leaders, we know there's this huge gap. You know, Paul's Christology, Christology shapes his ecclesiology. I mean, Paul here has this vision of this Jesus-empowered church, and even more than that, a Jesus-shaped church, a church that looks like Jesus and walks like Jesus and and talks like Jesus, and, and it fills every nook and cranny of society with the fullness of Jesus. Now we get it. Jesus is already present everywhere in every way. So what does it mean for us to be his fullness then? Well, the unique opportunity of the church is this, that as his body, we are the primary means to manifest his presence. It's through his church. It's the primary way that he makes the works of the kingdom tangible. It is the primary way that the gospel gets proclaimed. It's through the church that we create these loving communities on mission that fill every nook and cranny of society with the fullness of Jesus. And Paul says that we are designed as his body. Just stretch, open up to be the fullness of Jesus. Filling every nook and cranny of society with Jesus. And what does it look like to be that kind of fullness, to to, to saturate? It's like an aquarium. The water saturates, it fills, it engulfs. Every nook and cranny of that aquarium is filled and touched. And that's our 
privilege as the church. We are the fullness of Jesus, where we fill every crack and crevice of society, leaving nothing untouched by the fullness of Jesus. I don't know if that gets you excited, but sign me up. I mean, that's, that's a God-sized dream called to more, and that's what we're promised. The church, with all of its shortcomings, has that capacity. And that, again, leads us to this first move. We need to illuminate the mystery of more, the more that Jesus is, and the more that the church is called to, to fill every nook and cranny of society with the fullness of Jesus.